finals. And of course, legendary Kim Chung Wan is also in the semifinals. And we've got a big crowd waiting for them. The first matchup will be Oh Sang-guk of Korea against Max Hartung of Germany, who's been having a great season. Both of these fencers have met each other uh, just recently. Max Hartung won the Budapest World Cup, and that's where he and O oh matched up, and he won 15-12. The second matchup of the semifinals will be Hungarian Zalagi against Korean Kim Jong-won. Joining me today is Kamali Thompson, a U.S. fencer trying to make it to the Olympics. She is uh, also at the same time trying to become a doctor as well, which is pretty amazing. And I'm Iris Zimmerman, one of the FIE commentators. Hi, Kamali. Hi, Iris. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, having me. Uh, I was here yesterday doing Women's Saber, and it's fun to be back for Men's Saber. So first up, we're gonna we're gonna see Oh Sang Guk of Korea against Max Hartung of Germany. What do you think we might expect in that bout? I think this is gonna be a really good bout. Uh, they're both really, really tall, really long individuals. So I think it's gonna be a matter of how can both people stop their attack and how can they have really strong defense. You talked a lot about that dominating the box, and some fencers do it right off the bat and do a lot of that, and some fencers are kind of move and use the strip more. Um, I also see that in the Koreans, yeah. they have a tendency to go in and then really use the whole entirety of the piece. Right, so um, I'm not really sure which one they'll pick first, because if I was, you know, six foot three, I would be attacking. <laughs> most of the time, but at the same time, your opponent has the same advantages. So are you gonna, you know, use your attack first, or are you gonna take away their strength first? It's just a matter of which one you wanna do. Yeah, and when you're watching on the screen, it's really hard to tell how tall and how big these fencers are. I mean, these are tall, very big, very fast fencers. And you did mention how tall Oh sang -guk is. You said 6'3", I've heard 6'4". This young 22-year-old is really a phenom, has everything, and it's amazing that he can move his body the way he does, being 6'4". I mean, they do so much footwork. It's Footwork is a huge part of Korean training, and that's how they're able to move that way. You just add a four-meter lunge on top of it, and then you can hit anyone in the world. Yeah, and he's famous for, Oh sang is really famous for that super long lunge. And earlier we saw these nice long attacks, and sometimes it lands too soon, and they don't get the attack. But Oh has sort of changed the game, and, and the referees have sort of had to look at the video and say, oh my gosh, this guy is still going, his lunge is so long. Right, I mean, and that just comes from a lot of length, obviously, but also a lot of power from the back leg and a lot of acceleration. I had um, Frances Chow earlier on from uh, Sydney Sabre, and she was with me with the table of 32, and she actually knows Max Hartung very well, and she's probably in the crowd watching and cheering him on. And one of the funny things that she told me was that her mom tried every sport for Hartung, and he, the only person that took him was a Romanian fencing coach. Really? And she said, if you told me my son would be a, an Olympian, it would be, I, I wouldn't believe you. I would have thought he'd be a great volleyball player, but. <laughs> but he tried every sport and he stuck to fencing and we're glad he did. Nice attack from from the left, starting off very simple, but sometimes simple wins bouts. So in that way, is that dominating the box, coming straight out? For sure, because what you're doing is you're, you're forcing them to make a change. So if you're, that was unbelievable. I mean, that's 6-4 hitting you. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to be on defense against someone who was able to attack like that. Yeah, and Hartung's also quite tall. And if you're joining us for the first time, this is one of three Olympic weapons. This is Saber, the target areas from the hips up. Don't blink, this is the fastest of the three weapons. You'll notice that the time doesn't really go. There will be a break at eight touches. Whoever reaches eight first, then we'll go into a one minute break period and then we'll fence a second period. We go to 15 touches.
Here, another amazing long attack. And you're saying, oh my gosh, and I wouldn't want to. There goes that lunge. There goes that lunge. Um, I think what they're both doing is really smart. What they're, they're coming in, they're trying to make the other person finish, and then they're getting out of the way. Amazing control of his legs, and it is obvious that they do hours of footwork. And these Koreans train a whole lot. And Hardung's really trying to stay close and keep the distance close, which is what you have to do, but he just isn't able to stop the attack. So this is a classic saber mix-up of, I'm going to pull you short three times, and then I'm going to hit you with preparation and lunge a little bit faster that fourth time. And if you're new to fencing, it was really helpful, Kamali, that you told me, look at the feet first and then the hands when they get closer. That's really helped me to see who's starting first. Right. You want to see you want to see who's starting with their feet, and then you want to see who brings a hand out. You want to make sure that your hand isn't too far behind, or else it'll be uh, what we call attack in preparation. So O here now pulling away 6-2 in the first period. So Harden's trying to figure out how to stop this attack, and he tried to do a closest and superior post, but that wasn't the answer. And sometimes it's just a matter of distance and timing of, oh, it's, of the it's stop. It's always distance and timing, right. <laughs> Choose one or the other, maybe. So here we see O oh, just reaching out, and we did say he was 6-4. I mean, that's an incredible attack, and one of the things we have to, uh, the opponent has to do is, how do I stop it? And it's interesting, too, because he's finishing his attacks with his lunge, but he's also finishing with a flung. Just, we call it a flying lunge when you're flying through the air because you want to keep changing the tempo. You don't want to finish the same lunge after lunge after lunge. You want to throw something different at them every once in a while. So O is taking a commanding lead over German Max Hartung, 8-2. Here in the first matchup of the semifinals, Max is definitely behind. We talked about stopping the attack. What can Hartung do? So it's pretty difficult because O is doing a really nice change of everything. I think what he needs to focus on is you don't want to you don't want to beat his lunge because it's so long. You want to provoke him to make him lunge, and then you want to just pull him short and finish with a nice long attack. I think that's one of Hartung's strengths, and if he can get that action a couple of times, then he can force O to either he can start going back or O will continue his attack and then hard can hit him in preparation so what you're hearing here is the korean crowd uh going nuts for O. and you know i think he's being bolstered by the crowd because the last time they met up actually you know the the score is a little bit bigger we know it's not over till it's over but hartung won in budapest 15 12 and beat O 15 12 in budapest so just recently so he said it's not over till it's over yep let's see if hartung can stop O's attack Referee Papatore goes to the video to see whose attack it was. So that's a great touch because they both start at the same time and both arms extended at the same time. So if we look at that video there, it looks but like Hartung it's a simultaneous, but Papatore thinks that O. did a little something extra with his arm, and that's why it's O's touch. Mm -hmm. One light action. A commanding lead by O. Hartung had a really nice attack, but then he went a little too fast and got hit with a counterattack. So I'm going to put this out there, and I know it's not hard, easy with O, but it almost seems like Hartung could use a little bit more of a step in to make O stop. He definitely needs to do something like a change in tempo or something different than what he's doing right now. But then like o he tries it there, and o then I say it, and the then he changes first. it up first. <laughs> But I think if he changed the tempo and just stuck with something really simple, that would be good for the next couple touches. He's not quite getting the attack, and he's almost falling short every time. Papatori gives the line. And you know what? At this point, it feels like, oh, just is He has an answer for command, everything that answer. Hartung has decided to do. Perry post for oh, but Hartung says, let's look at the video. and and. For those just watching fencing for the first time or uh, new to fencing, you're wa the, each fencer gets two video replays if they're 
if the call is overturned, they stick with two replays, but if the call stands just like this, then Hartung loses one of his video replays. Oh, within one. And he sort of walks away with this one. And it's not that Hartung, you know, I, you know, he wasn't able to stop O, as you were saying, and he's always kind of one step ahead. Right. And there's, there's nothing more frustrating than not being able to figure out exactly how you can stop what the other person is doing, but they fence a lot of teams, so I'm sure they'll be drawing each other again in the future. The next semifinals that are up, and I'm sure the hometown crowd, um, you could probably hear in the background, and super excited uh, that O oh is in the finals. And up next is another Korean matchup with Hungarian and two-time Olympic champion Aaron Zalagi. Zalagi fenced Sung Jung Mo, 15-7 in the 64, Wang Shi of China, 15-9, Pak Daman, close bout, 15-14, and Karatali, 15-12 to make the the semifinals. Kim Jong